Alright, how's it going everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is going to be the phase 6 guide for Dragon Song using the LPDU strats. LPDU is the Discord server for the light data center focused on ultimates. If you want to get in on that, it's down in the description below. You can join in. Uh, all the strats toolboxes are there. I'm going to put them in the description as well for you guys to check out yourself to navigate through it. But basically, I'm going to showcase the toolbox, explain the steps, as well as showcase my own in-game POV and kind of talk it over very slowly, explain what's going on. Um, and that's basically how this is going to go. So I hope you guys find this video useful and let's get right in. All right, so you just finished off P5 and now you're going to basically step into this arena. It's going to be like a square shape. And essentially what's going to happen is two dragons are going to spawn, Nidhogg and Race Valgar. Nidhogg is going to be on the west, Race Valgar will be on the east. Group 2 focuses Race Valgar. Group 1 focuses Nidhogg. Okay, that's the basics of it. And essentially, you want to keep both these bosses at 3% HP difference um, when they cast Akafa. So that's going to be pretty major uh, throughout the fight. Just make sure their healths are balanced. Um, you were, a lot of people refer to this mechanic as Hand of Pain because that's basically uh, from T. So it's kind of the same idea. Um, so we'll talk over the tethers real quick. And I'll show you guys the in-game POV of how I move and stuff and what the tethers represent. But basically, if you're a healers, uh, healers or DPS, uh, you're, three people are going to get red tether and three people are going to get the Reis Valgar ice tether. So fire and ice. And this is how you want to position um, the tethers. Uh, basically, M1 is going to be up here. Um, H1 and R1. These group 1 members are going to anchor. So you have the melee one, the R1, and the healer one. They're going to anchor their position, and the group 2 will be the ones adjusting based off the tethers, because you want to have two different colored tethers in each of these positions. So for example, if you're a ninja with the other guy, you can't have two fires standing here. It has to be fire and ice. So that's where the group two member here will adjust accordingly. All right, the melees are up here, healers are here, ranger here. So essentially exactly the, the safe spots to stand, by the way. Um, this ice block right here, if you count two tiles and then two tiles to the right, two tiles up, it's, in, it's generally in this area uh, where there's a dark pit. Down here, it's along this bridge line. This bridge line, count from this tile right here, and then stand towards the bridge line. Same thing here. Two tiles towards the bridge line. All right? And if you're a tank, you're gonna get completely different mechanic, which I'll explain in a sec, but first I'll explain the tethers, okay? So the tethers are gonna go off like so. It has to be stretched out. And basically, the reason you want fire and ice together is to cleanse each other's debuffs. All right, you're gonna get debuff otherwise, and that debuff, uh, the ice tether, is gonna give you a frozen debuff, basically, where um, after a certain period of time, and when the debuff runs out, your character will simply freeze in place. And the fire tether, you're gonna get a pyretic, which basically makes it so that if you use an action, um, as the debuff runs out, you're going to take insane lethal damage and you don't want that so that's why in the beginning here we actually cleanse each other's debuffs fire if you with fire and ice together we'll cleanse both the debuffs so that's why we do this so for tanks if i'm going to summarize it uh both tanks they're gonna pop cds and they're always gonna stand northwest and northeast right towards the boss hitbox unless both nidhogg and race valgar's mouths glow fire um, in that case, you would need to stack together and take both the hits, essentially. So by default, you're going to go northwest, northeast if you're tanking. 
and this is kind of how it looks. So in this example, uh, Hrace Valgar's mouth is glowing. He's going to shoot this AoE going across the middle like so. And Nidhogg would be the would have the basically the tank buster on the Dark Knight in this example, right? And this is how it would look like if Nidhogg's mouth was glowing. He's going to shoot like this. And Raze Valgar tank buster goes here, just like so. So that's what the tanks need to do in this in this uh, scenario. And in the final scenario for tanks, when both uh, Nidhogg and Raze Valgar mouths are glowing, you're basically going to stack together like so. All right, that's pretty much the beginning. I'm going to show in-game POV of how this goes. All right, so here's the beginning of the mechanic of p6 so as you can see i'm positioned on the east side because i'm m2 for on group two i'm gonna focus race valgar so i'm pumping all the damage on him uh the tanks gotta tank their boss so if you're main tank you're tanking nidhogg if you're off tank you're tanking race valgar and here are the tethers so in this example i have a fire tether and i have to watch my other melee okay so if you're a healer, you watch your other healer. If you're ranged, you watch your other range, see what they have. So in this example, my Dragoon has the same tether, right? It's not fully stretched out. That's why it looks like this, but it is a fire tether because it's coming from Nidhogg. And essentially, I know he has it. So I look behind me immediately and I see, okay, who has same color tethers? And they're standing there and I notice Okay, there is the Dancer, they have Ice Tether, and there's the Black Mage with Ice Tether. So I have to go here. That's exactly what we do. So I move over to him. I stand right here, boom, just like so, and then I target the boss again. I'll just kind of show this again. The Dancer, by the way, is moving towards the melee. Like, we're basically just swapping position. And here is where we stand. So... As you can see here, the healers, how they're standing. They're standing basically across the bridge line. Here's the white tile I was talking about. See, they just got one, two. They stand on the bridge line. Uh, you can also stand where the, where the black mage was standing. He's not dead center on the bridge line, but this is generally fine as long as it's two tiles away. Um, but this also is just fine. As long as it's towards the bridge line, you're good. So, And then I just damage uh, Nidhogg. And here... There's going to be uh, someone getting a uh, mortal vow. So in this example, the dancer got it. And here you want to immediately be spread out. So that's the next mechanic we're going to be talking about. So what's going to happen here is mortal vow is going to be given to a random DPS. Okay, so players need to be spread out here. If anyone is accidentally hit by this, they're going to get a 50% maximum health down, which is basically gonna hurt like anything you get hit by is going to hurt a lot because you're just gonna have total less health um and the one thing you want to do here is regulate both their health bars like you can't have high health on nidhogg and low health on race valgar they have to be three percent health difference so make sure they're even and here's what's going to happen next after the modal vow is given to a random dps Group 1 is going to be north side. Group 2 is going to be south side. And here's here comes Akafa. Uh, basically, they're going, to they're going to be casting Akafa. And you want to use uh, mitigations here. You know, reprisal, soil, carachol. You want to give shields, all that good stuff. And then you want to hit Nidhogg if there's a purple tether. Or hit Reisvalgar if there's a white tether. The white tether basically indicates, like, okay, this white tether going across means we need to hit Race Valgar because the HP difference is not 3%. So the game basically tells you that. But you also want to, like, just make sure you regulate both by, like, clicking their health, making sure that they're at least 3% HP difference. So make sure you regulate that. After that, there's going to be the basically, there's going to be damage going out on this group and this group. That's what's going to happen. And if it's not within 3% HP difference, it's not going to be a fun time. And also just know that if you, if one person dies, um, like if Race Valgar kills someone, he's going to enrage. If the Mortal Vow is, is given to more than one player, he's going to enrage. 
keep this in mind. These are the enrage, enrage conditions because you're going to be passing mortal vows to one person um, later on in the mechanics. You cannot give this to more than one person. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys the in-game POV of this so you get a better idea. All right, so here we go. Mortal vow is given to the dancer in this example, right? And so now we have to make sure we hit Nidhogg because there is this... You see this purple tether going across? It means they're telling us, the game's telling us to hit him because the HP difference is basically not around 3%. So we hit Nidhogg here, and just like so, their HP difference is good now, and so that's basically gonna what's gonna happen is you're gonna take this damage as a group. Okay, so next thing after um, Akafaz are done, essentially the next thing that's gonna happen is there's gonna be the first dive and the tank busters and basically uh nidhog is going to dive and he's going to cut off either west or east side of the arena like vertically right and so raise valgar he's going to do a hallowed wing and he's going to cut off north side or south side of the arena based on which which of his wings glow and there's going to be only a single square um that's going to be basically available to use whichever one it will be and basically the party should always be around the middle-ish um, for this mechanic, just so you can quickly get to the places you need to go. So just stay in the middle and keep DPSing as normal. Um, and in this example, Nidhogg's gonna dive like this, Hallowed Wing is on this side, and you're gonna have the Tank Busters go off like so. But based on Raze Valgar, um, if his head is up or down, which I will demonstrate in-game POV, just to make this very clear, uh, based off that, he's going to attack the tanks either far or close. Uh, it's based on distance of any player. So you're going to have to play around that. So in this example, um, his head is basically down. And in this example, his head is up. So it's going to hit the furthest targets uh, away, basically, with the tank busters. And that is primarily it. I'm going to be showcasing the POV now, just to kind of better explain this. Okay, so here we are after the Akafaz go off. Now, we can see Nidhogg flies away. You keep hitting uh, Harais Valgar. And here we go, right? You have Hallowed Wing being cast by Harais Valgar. Nidhogg is going to be cleaving this side of the map. And you can see Harais Valgar, one of his wings is glowing like so. And his head is up right now. So his head is up. If it's down, his head will basically be like visible here. But because his head is up, um, he's going to be basically hitting the furthest tanks away. Like the furthest two people. And so just like so, we position ourselves like this. The dive goes off here. We stay around this area. And the tank busters go off like so. Kind of show this again real quick, just for clarity's sake. Here's the Hollowed Wing cast, and here's Cauterize. Cauterize is Nidhogg's cast. You can see I'm doing damage right here. Cauterize goes off. That's Nidhogg's cast. Boom. And then you can just keep back DPSing the boss. And here is where the first Mortal Vow pass happens. As you can see, the Dancer has three seconds left on it. So the Dancer, because it was given to a random DPS, the Dancer will need to pass here first. And I'm gonna sh I'm gonna tell you guys the order of all right. So to better kind of demonstrate the mortal vow passing order throughout the fight, um, essentially, you're going to be giving it to multiple players across the fight. Like you want to keep the Nisi up, and you need to pass it to someone, right? So firstly, it'll be a random DPS that gets it, like we mentioned, and the random DPS is going to give it to a main tank. The main tank then gives it to off tank. And then the off tank gives it to the M1. But if the random DPS was M1, M2 will take this. So if you're M2, pay attention to the party list, see who gets it, and then play around that, essentially. But M2 doesn't have to take anything unless M1, the random DPS who gets the first moral vow, unless they get it, that's when they snatch in. And then finally, it's the caster for the last Mortal Vow pass. 
So that's going to be throughout the fight. Okay, so here it is basically. The first Mortal Vow Pass is going to be given here to the Gunbreaker. So the RDM is the DPS that got it. And they're going to give it to the tank. So after the first Mortal Vow Pass happens, it's going to be Wrath Flames. And now we're going to be talking about this, right? Because there's a, it might seem overwhelming, but I'm going to show you in-game POV to kind of also explain this better. But essentially, there's going to be four people who get dark debuffs and two are going to have white debuff stacks. Basically, the two white debuffs means stacking with a another pair. So it's two-man stack. The dark debuffs have to be spread. Okay, so Harais Valgar, basically, he's not going to be targetable at this point. You're just going to be hitting Nidhogg. Um, and you're going to see where Harais Valgar flies to. So in this example here, right, here comes the first orb spawn. There's going to be multiple orbs spawning in like, let's just call it three. It's going to be basically three. So you're going to have one here, one here, or one here. It's going to be diagonal, or it's going to be either way. You just, all you care about is the third one that appears. I'm going to be showcasing this just to kind of better explain it. Um, you want to basically go, TLDR, you want to go to the third orbs set across from Nidhogg. Okay? So in this example here, one spawned here, one spawned here. The third one is going to spawn top left side. Okay? So that's going to be here. And what we end up doing is checking where Hrace Valgar is and going either towards Nidhogg or away from Nidhogg. Okay, it depends where Hrace Valgar's dive is. So, let's say the third one appeared here, top left, but Hrace Valgar is going to dive in this area. We would not go here. We would go here. Opposite side. As long as it's on the third like line think of it as a line so each each one is a line you have a line going like this you have another line going like this you want to go to the line where the third one appeared and either go towards nidhogg or away from nidhogg depending where his dagger is so essentially um this is how it looks uh you can see here in this example nidhogg and Hrazvalgar. Hrazvalgar is basically diving this area. So the group ends up going here. Okay? And there's going to be a bunch of uh, AoEs happening. And you need to move in like a J shape. Like an arc. And here's the exact steps for it. So you have the first one. Second one. And then third one. And then fourth one. Just like so. And then you're going to end up here. Okay, just keep in mind that after the first one goes off, immediately step forward and go just barely outside the first puddle. So just like on the edge of it. And after the second one goes, you want to keep moving. So generally after the first two, it's normally just fine to just hold W, just keep moving forward until you end up in the middle side. Just make sure you don't stay inside this puddle. Just not not for too long after it goes off immediately step forward and now we have this last final akmorn and as that resolves you know the orb three will explode shortly after that and harris valgo will come back and he will appear so now nidhogg is going to cast uh either hot tail or hot wing if he casts hot tail the middle is not safe in this straight line from where Nidhogg is. And if it's hot wing, that means the sides are not safe. His wings would not be safe and the middle would be. And so basically with the debuffs that you have, you're gonna need to spread out based off what you have. And this is how it's gonna look. So in this example, we have one, two, three, four, standing like this from Nidhogg. And then if you have ignore one ignore two you're taking this stack together and if you have chain one chain two you're taking it to the wall chain to the wall ignore is to the side of it okay so there is a way to mark yourself um 
using macro, which I will I will put in the description if you're not going to use AM. So just so everyone understands in LPDU in PF, everyone uses AM. It's auto markers. So if you want to do this without AM, I will be putting in the pinned comments below. You can copy paste it as a macro. And basically what it does, it's going to mark yourself by just clicking it and it will go down that is like one, two, three, four. It applies to the ignore and the chain as well. So make sure you check your debuff, see what you have. If you don't have a debuff, you're taking the pair stack with your partner. So in this example, the gunbreaker, right? Uh, the gunbreaker and the RDM who don't have the white debuff, they're taking that pair with their partner. And you'll know who your partner is based off the marker when you mark yourself, basically. All right, so that's how it goes. And as for the spreads, one, two, three, four. One goes closest towards Nidhogg, and then as you keep going outwards, the last one's gonna be basically dead center. So this is the example of hot wing. The other way you can do this, by the way, is if you're not gonna mark yourself, just know that the priority from going from Nidhogg to the middle is melee, ranged, healer, tank. So if you want, you can check your party list, see who has the debuff and line up accordingly to your role priority. Um, but yeah, that's one method. The toolbox actually does mention this, or you can just use your eyeballs and just don't overlap the other player. You have plenty of time to actually move and spread out. But yeah, marking definitely makes this more consistent. And here is the example of hot tail. So after you do the J movement, and hot tail is not safe, you're going to keep running down and you're going to spread out like so. In fact, you can even spread out in this square like this. So you have two people in front, two people in the back, and you can still keep damaging the boss. And you can also, after this AOE goes off, you can walk into it and drop the AOE here because the AOE goes off right after hot tail goes off. So you have time to kind of walk into it if you want to have more room and it's just something to consider. So now I'm going to be showing this um, in-game POV. Okay, so where we left off, the dancer is giving their mortal, pow mortal vow pass, as you can see in the middle, that's how it went off. And that's the animation of it and everything. Once it ticks down to zero, um, now the paladin has the mortal vow pass. Okay, and Dancer has this debuff, which basically means uh, they cannot take another Mortal Vow pass. And so here we go. Wrath Flames begin. You're going to be DPSing Nidhogg. Race Valgar flies. In this example, the middle orbs show Race Valgar is on the away from Nidhogg. So we're going to go towards Nidhogg by default here. So now we either go up or down based on where the orbs spawn. So let's see here. One spawns here. The other one spawns top right, so I immediately move my camera here because I know this is going to be the safe spot because this this um, row is the safe row because it's where the third ball spawns. So I immediately run here. Here we go. We stand just around here. One. Go to the edge. Two. Keep moving. While the other ball AOEs are going off, hot wing. Hot wing means we're going to stay in the middle. Since he's not casting hot tail, you can see all the markers above our heads. Boom, goes off, just like so. So in this example, I had no debuff, and I had to stack with a white debuff. So here it is. If you're if you have ignore marker, you stay like this. If you have chain, you go to the wall, like we mentioned, and you can see how they're spreading out here on the right. The AOEs go off. This is how the AOEs look, just like so. And that's Wrath Flames. And then right after Wrath Flames, there's going to be a Mortal Vow pass happening. So in this example, uh, the Paladin, as you can see, they gave it to the Gunbreaker. The Mortal Vow passes happen in the middle, basically. And so you want to make sure to know when your turn is, because you need to pass it. All right, so continuing on after Wrath Flames and the Mortal Vow pass, uh, the second Mortal Vow pass happens here. It's going to be the second Akafa, just like the previous mechanic. You want to pay attention to the HP difference. It has to be 3% HP difference between them. So if you've been going too ham on Nidhogg, 
make sure that when you go back and you need to damage Royce Valgar, make sure you DPS him. So pay attention, pay constant attention to this. And just know that if you're a ranged job, you can DPS, it, let's say you have spread, you can still DPS Royce Valgar from a distance if you need to. Keep this in mind. So this is the next mechanic that's coming up. It's gonna be in this example, it's gonna be Hollowed Wing plus Hot Wing from Nidhogg. But it can also be Hot Tail, so keep that in mind. If it's tail, obviously, you're gonna go to the sides. If it's wings, you're gonna stay in the middle. So the first thing you do here is you immediately pan your camera over to Reis Valgar, see which side, which side is safe. And then you're gonna see the cast bar of Nidhogg and see which area is safe. Again, Reis Valgar might have his head up or down as well. So you want to pay attention to that. Remember, if his head is up, tanks are far. Have to go far. If their heads, if the head is down, the tanks have to get closer to Nidhogg. So this is the example here if it's hot tail. Remember, keep paying attention to Reis Valgar's head here if it's up or down. After that, it's going to be the Moraval pass to the melee 1. Or it could also be the melee 2 if the M1 got the first mortal vow the first application of it all right now i'm going to be showcasing the example so here it is akafa 2 goes off you can see the white tether we're damaging raise valgar i'm constantly checking between their healths making sure and just like that we're good now here's what we do see i immediately look towards raise valgar that's the first thing i do because he's the first one that casts so raise valgar casts hollowed wings I know that this side is safe. And then I look at my enmity list, which uh, I have right here. He is casting hot tail. So I know that middle is not safe. So we immediately go to the side. See, I'm DPSing Nidhogg in this example, and I'm just moving away. And just know that Reis Valgar's head was down, which means the tanks need to be close. This is why the rest of the party goes away from Reis Valgar all the way towards Nidhogg, so that the tanks can take their their tank busters. And then Mortal Val happens right here, given to the melee one, which is the Dragoon. In this example, I am melee two, so I don't have to take it. But if the, like I said, if the melee one already got it first application of it, I would be taking it here, not the Dragoon, all right? So here he goes, he gives it to him. And the next mechanic, this is going to be the worm breaths. Now I'm going to be showcasing this in the toolbox and we'll go back here and explain this in the POV. All right, so here's how worm breaths work. Basically, three people are going to get, it's just like before, the first worm breath. The second worm breath is going to be three people getting ice tether coming from Reis Valgar. Three people going to get fire tether coming from Nidhogg and you need to stretch it out. There's going to basically be five tethers north, and here are the exact positions for them. You have this going not directly on this bridge, but outside of the bridge. All right. Same thing with the RDM. In this example, they're going outside the bridge by literally one block. The one going north will always be a healer. So they're going to go north directly on this uh, marker. Unless... Here's, there's one condition where, depending what the other healer has, it will vary. So if the Scholar and the White Mage both have the White Ice debuff, they're going to have to swap. There, needs to, there will need to be a swap up here. And I'm going to show this example right now. Here's an example where Scholar and White Mage both have Fire Tether. You notice, the Scholar would need to scoot over to this side, and the RDM goes up here. So if you're a healer player, just pay attention to your other healer, see what they get, and then you'll know if you need to move or not. Just remember that the shield healer is prioritizing north, and the white mage goes down. So here's all the mechanics going off, and just know that the tanks... Uh, the tanks are going to stack middle if it's double tank buster. Otherwise, you're going to go southwest, southeast. Just like in the beginning, what we do with tanks. You're going to watch their breath, which one has the breath 
uh, on their mouth. There's going to be a glow on their mouth, and then you're going to move. So in this example, um, Nidhogg basically had the breath, and Horace Valgar did not have the breath. So the Gunbreaker took the Horace Valgar Tank Buster, and the Dark Knight moved here. Just know that if you're the tanks here, make sure you're going a little bit more north instead of sharp intercardinal because you're going to risk hitting the white mage in this example. You're going to be able you're going to hit them. So, as you can see the mark the marker right here just stay above it. This way you don't hit the person at south. Also, avoid having melees be um, in the middle. You want to make sure the melees are actually close to the boss, either here. If there's two melees on one side, you'll have one melee here and the other melee here. And essentially, this other melee uh, we'll need to do some GCDing for ranged. After this mechanic happens, you're gonna get the debuffs that we talked about in the beginning. Where, basically, in this example, we didn't cleanse each other's debuffs. We want to actually get the debuffs for the upcoming mechanic. This is why we have the debuffs here. Three people have Pyretic, three people have Frozen. And essentially what's gonna happen is, you wanna stand on the side based off your debuff. So if you have ice debuff, you're going to go towards fire. You go towards Nidhogg. If you have the pyretic debuff, you're going to go towards Raze Valgar. And you're not going to use any action when the debuff timer runs out. Just don't press anything. Press double tap escape and you're good. As the tanks, you're going to basically move forward and you're going to use your invuln and be at the front. You have to be in front of the boss. So you have to stand uh, in front of the boss on your side. It doesn't matter of what aggro, just make sure that you're in front. I'm gonna be showcasing all of this now in my POV, just so it makes better sense. All right, so here is now the warm breath mechanic. I'm gonna be showcasing the movements. As you can see, I'm moving here. I got the fire debuff, and here's exactly where you stand. Check this out. This is the bridge line, right? And you're gonna stand right here if you're on this bridge line. If you are um, on the other side, it's exact same thing. And if you're in front, just standing on the marker or a little bit in front of the marker is completely fine. See in this example, the Dragoon where they're standing, this is completely fine. You can go a little bit like just around the marker, just not behind the marker. Don't go behind, just either on it or a little bit in front of it is totally fine. And it goes off like this. And now we have the debuffs. Nidhogg and Horace Valgar now fly, and because I have Pyretic Fire debuff, I want to go towards Ice. I want to go towards Horace Valgar, and I'm see, I double tap escape. I let the debuff timer run out. I don't do any actions. This goes off, and then you're going to go all the way to the edge, towards north, A marker. And you're going to, because it's going to be like proximity, and you want to be right on the edge. And if you have... Mortal Vow, this is going to be the final Mortal Vow pass. The Dragoon is going to give it to the caster. So it was actually given to the Sage in this POV, but it should never be. It should always be given to the caster. There was just a little error here that happened um, in this specific PF, but it should always be caster by default. J just know that this isn't accurate here. This isn't how LPDU does it. It was just... Uh, I believe though the one person walked away and basically that's what happened. So don't be confused by this. It should be given to the caster. All you need to do is basically stand on the very edge here and don't move. If you have to be given the thing and if you have the if you have mortal vow, that's it. And here's how it looks in the toolbox. You're going to be north. Nidhogg is going to perform a slam. It's like we said, it's based off uh, distance. So you don't want to leave the north wall basically. Mortal Vow pass right here, and then you're going to damage and basically kill Nidhogg and Raze Valgar. And that's pretty much the end of the fight. They're both going to be casting in Rage, and you have to kill them both. And just to show you, uh, this is how long the cast is. It's called Revenge of the Horde. We kill Nidhogg. We kill Raze Valgar. And if it ever comes down to it, you can cleave both targets. If you use AoEs, you can hit them both. Uh, and yeah, and then finally, it's... Uh, the ending of the phase but essentially what happens here is you're going to have a dot being applied so you want to use mitigation you want to shield you want to heal uh thorn is going to show up he's going to have his little dialogue and it's going to be shockwave damage the bleed comes up 
is going to do a cast right here. And it's going to be big damage coming out, so you want to use your mitigations. As you can see in the party list, there's a lot of mitigations happening here, because this one hurts. This one hurts like a truck. And the final phase commences. And we'll be talking about this in our next video. And finish off our DSR guide. So hopefully this has helped you guys out. I hope I explained things well. Please let me know in the comments if you have questions on specific mechanics. Remember, you can always hop on LPDU, talk to people there uh, if you're unsure about specific mechanics or if you just want to view the toolboxes yourself. You can also check in the description below for the toolbox, for LPDU, all that good stuff. And we're pretty much coming to the conclusion of um, our DSR guide. Um, we're pretty much getting there. There's just one more video coming out and we're pretty much done with this. Uh, this will hopefully help you guys get the clear. And take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. Take care of yourselves. And much love.